kind of get into a case study. This is a lagoon built in northeast Nebraska uh, quite a few years ago, and it's a soda ash treated liner, the clay of CL material that was treated with soda ash. I'm going to try to go through the soil mechanics testing and design, a little bit of construction considerations that we did, and a little bit of quality control testing, and also some post purability testing that we did at the site. Now, at this time, we had a requirement of uh, uh, 0.25 inches per day of specific discharge that we're trying to. Uh, um, get below. Uh, the head of they wanted to put in there was about nine foot, and they wanted to use a one foot thick liner. So just plug it into Darcy equations, rearranged a little bit. Our target permeability for this site was 7.4 times 10 to the minus 7 centimeters per second. So we're trying to obtain in the lab. And again, I didn't really go over this, but there's some um, time to go over this, but uh, uh, theoretically, permeability is only engineering property that can be um, uh, lowered by both density and a molding water content. So basically, wetter is better. You get as wet as you can and as dense as you can, and you're going to get a low permeability. And uh, this, this line establishes about 80% saturation, and this line behind is about 90% saturation. And you can't, it's difficult to get it more than 90% saturation in the field because uh, it's hard to squeeze the last 10% of air out of it. And of course, your zero air voids on the right is your 100% saturation line. With that knowledge, uh, we ran a compaction curve on here, and uh, it's about 105 at uh, dry, dry density, 105 maximum dry density, 105 pounds per foot at 80% natural water content. So we ran tests um, at 95%, 98, 100 percent of uh, proctor density on untreated, that same untreated clay soil, and we also ran uh, two tests at, with soda ash at an application rate of uh, 10 pounds per 100 square foot area, six inches deep. And, um, and so we basically got at these higher density rates, you know, they're a little bit all over the board here, but um, uh, we were able to meet that, but they, the customer said, well, we like to factor safe of this very slow permeability rate by adding soda ash. So that's the way we, they went. Then this curve is just to example what you can do out there. We ran two tests at um, 95 with the soda ash and at a, um, 100. And um, it's basically with the equivalent to 80 percent of saturation, uh, if, if you consider the building con water content. And you can develop a little area of acceptability that you want to uh, compact to. So that's kind of the method we went with there. And as they are constructed at that, that same window of acceptability, they ran a bunch of these are field density curve with a nuke meter, and you can see most of them are within there, but they had few of them not. I think I'm a couple of slides here. Anyway, um, then they also ran some post permeability, or they got some undisturbed samples, and we ran some post permeability tests on that. And again, here's your densities and your compacted water content. You can see these two here are at low density and also very dry water contents and uh, low percent saturation. And you, we got some pretty high permeability rates. These ones that were within that um, were very low 
as you can see in that chart. They went back and recompacted those areas. I think it was the side slopes that they had problems with. We compacted them uh, uh, and added a little bit of water and um, were able to meet the permeability um, rates. And these blue squares are the permeability densities and water contents, uh, and they correlate with, with those low permeability are all within uh, here after they are redone, recompacted. Now I'll just go over a little bit of construction sequence quickly here of this site. Uh, what they did here to get the uh, one foot liner, they um, over excavated down the pit down to, uh, and stockpiled the six inches over excavated six inches and stockpiled it. The, the, the base surface was scarified by a depth of six inches. They, um, once it was scarified, they added the soda ash with a lime spreader. They mixed with a roller tiller. Water was added to the soil in the soda ax mixture. A sheep's foot was compacted with the, the treated soil was compacted with a sheep's foot roller. Uh, the next six inches of, of compacted soil was brought in at nine inch loose lifts and compacted. And the same method was done at different direction. And I think it's good to build these in two different um, layers even if it's a thin, just so you can get a uni better uniform compaction. Now I'll go a little bit into field testing of compacting earth fills. These are the methods that are uh, approved through the ASTM drive cylinder, clod test, sand cone, rubber balloon, and nuclear density meter. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. The drive cylinder is D2939. Seven, and it is pretty destructive, but it gives you kind of a, um, a kind of an undisturbed sample, basically, and that you can get a, uh, a density and water content with. The clod method is basically uh, breaking down and getting a nice clod and mix it with wax and water and dump, dump it in water and get a, a unit weight that way. The sand cone is another common method. It's been around a long time. Picture of that out there. Here's the rubber balloon apparatus. Here's a nuclear density gauge. This is pretty nice for liners because you can get, if you, you have to make sure you correct the water um, content with some other method and then um, make sure you get the right reading, but it, it's a great way to get a lot of readings in these liners. You may have to hire a um, contractor to do that for you. And then, of course, another way of doing it is, is getting undisturbed samples and running post-permeability tests. There's different ways you can get an undisturbed sample from a drill rig to having a backhoe push it the tube for you. This is on a slope. It's not in a, we're not putting it in as an angle. It's kind of misleading here. Ways you can do that. Just got to make sure you get a nice even push on it. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, and here's that drive cylinder that I was talking about earlier in the presentation. And it's you can get an undisturbed block, uh, sample with this apparatus at the surface of your liner. You can have a driver, a sampler, and you got a little plastic sleeve in here that you can collect your sample, take it out, and send to the laboratory. And they can also give you a density, and they also can classify the soil to index properties of the soil. And 
you, you push the, uh, this drive sample in by dropping the driver and a dense material like a liner, you, you're going to go to about one sixteenth of inch per hard blow. Give you some idea how many blows you might need, quite a few. And then here's just the sample that is ready for some lab testing.